So here's, here's another series that we're going to look at. Um, we're going to use the integral test to discuss whether it converges or diverges. Um, and the first thing, again, you have to justify that it's positive, continuous, and decreasing. So the first thing we have to worry about are if there are any discontinuities on this problem. Um, and obviously you're going to have to integrate it as well. Um, the first thing that may come to mind, hopefully comes to mind, would be partial fractions. Um, you know, maybe you could factor this thing on the bottom. But I think you'll find if you try to factor n squared minus 4n plus 5, it doesn't really factor very well. I suppose you could always use the quadratic formula and go about it that way. But um, this is just one of those kind of tricky problems where there's a, an easier way to go about it, I think. So I'm going to rewrite n squared minus 4n plus 5. I'm going to do a little completing the square on this. So I'm going to rewrite the denominator. So remember to complete the square. You basically group the n terms together in this case. And what I'm going to want is I want a coefficient of 1 on the n squared term. Hey, I've already got that, which is good. Um, and then remember you take half of the middle term, which is negative 2, and you square it. So I'll get positive 4, and that's what I throw inside this problem. Now I have to be careful right now because if I just write this as equal to this, clearly this is not correct because if I multiply it out, I'm going to get an extra plus 4. Well, to compensate for that, I will subtract 4 away. I can now write the stuff in parentheses as n minus 2 quantity squared plus 1. So really the problem I'm going to examine instead will be from 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 2 squared plus 1. And if you look at this problem again, you know, there's a couple things that may may make you nervous. Again, is there anything in the denominator that's going to make this 0? Well, definitely not in this problem. Um, you know, if you plug any number into the n minus 2 part, you're either going to get 0 or a positive or negative number, but when you square it, it's going to become positive so that when you add it on, um, you know, you're not going to get 0 in the denominator. So this is certainly a continuous function. It's also going to be positive because again by the same reasoning plug any number in you square it you will get something positive plus one you have something positive on the bottom the last thing we have to worry about is is it decreasing and this is one of those again you could go through and use the first derivative test but this is going to be clearly decreasing at least for n greater than or equal to two notice if you plug one in you'll get, if you go from 1, you'll get a positive number, but then when you plug in 2, you're going to get 0. So actually, um, it goes from decreasing to increasing, but if you use values of n greater than or equal to 2, it is going to be strictly decreasing. So what we're going to do, do instead is we'll examine the improper integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over n minus 2 squared plus 1. And the reason why we can start this at 2 is if you start writing in terms, well you can plug 1 in, you'll get 1 over, let's see, you'll get 1 minus 4 which is negative 3, negative 3 plus 5 is 2, so that's my n equals 1 term. And then I can just simply rewrite it now starting from 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared minus 4n plus 5. So certainly these are equivalent representations of the series on the left. So, well, it only decreases from 2 on. I'll just bust it up and look at it from 2 on. If the integral, excuse me, if this series turns out to be finite, well, if I add a half to it, it's still going to be finite, which means it will converge. Likewise, if this part diverges, the plus 1 half is not going to change that at all. So this is the idea on why you can just look at it instead from 2 to infinity. 
All right, so I'm going to rewrite this problem. The limit as t goes to infinity from 2 to t of 1 over n minus 2 squared plus 1. I guess I'll replace my n's with x's here. dx dx. And now I have to integrate this thing. So again, kind of the same way I did the other one. I'm just going to think about the improper integral. 1 over x minus 2 quantity squared plus 1. And this is going to be a problem that you can do just by, again, a u substitution. Maybe it sticks out to you right off the bat. So u is x minus 2. du will simply be dx. And now when I rewrite this problem, I'll have 1 over u squared plus 1 du. And recall that 1 over u squared plus 1, this is the arctangent formula. So it says I'm going to get arctangent of u, which is x minus 2. And again, normally you would have a plus c, but I'm going to turn this back into my improper integral anyway. So it says this original thing, if you integrate it, you'll get arctangent of x minus 2. So I just need to replace my limit as t goes to infinity. So the limit as t goes to infinity of arctangent of x minus 2. And I'm going to evaluate this from 2 to t. All right, so now we need to plug in our limits of integration and see if this thing converges or diverges. So I'll get the limit as t goes to infinity. Well, if I plug in t, I'll get arctangent of t minus 2 minus when I plug the lower limit of 2 into the problem, I'll get arctangent of 0. And recall that arctangent of 0 is just a number. Do you remember what arctangent of 0 is? I believe it should just be 0, unless I've forgotten stuff as well. Definitely it is 0, because tangent of 0 is 0. So really, I need to think about the limit as of arctangent of t minus 2 as t goes to infinity. If this converges to a finite number, then so will the integral. If it diverges, well, then so will the integral. Well, if you plug infinity in, definitely t minus 2 is still going to go to infinity. So what happens to arctangent as you go off to infinity? What happens to the y-coordinates? Well, recall the graph of arctangent has an asymptote at positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And it looks like that and like that. Basically, it just looks like regular tangent kind of flipped on its side a little bit. So the idea is, well, as you go off to infinity, arctangent is getting closer and closer <coughs> Excuse me, to pi over 2. So really, this whole original limit is simply going to turn into pi over 2 minus 0, or pi over 2. Well, our improper integral converges. We can now conclude, therefore, that the original integral must also converge. Again, you have to be careful. The improper integral does converge to pi over 2. That does not at all mean that this m or excuse me that the original series converges to pi over two. All we know is that it converges. We still don't know to what number. So don't don't fall into the trap of saying, well, the improper integral goes to pi over two. The original series must also go to pi over two because again, that's just simply not correct. The only thing we can conclude is if the improper integral converges or diverges, the original series also converges or diverges. So, again, kind of a tricky problem. Um, you know, I don't think the, obviously, you know, busting it up is a little tricky um, if it's the first time you've seen it. Um, the integration can be a little tedious. You know, if you're thinking about doing partial fractions, and that's certainly what sticks out to me at first, it ends up you know, getting a little tedious, so maybe there's a better way to do it. Well, completing the square ends up being the better way of doing it. Once you do end up integrating, you end up bringing in this arctangent. 
Um, and inverse trig functions are one of those things that you don't see that often, um, so they can still be a little confusing, I think, to some people. Um, and then again, you have to think about the limit of that arctangent function. But this is also a good point, <coughs> um, or a good reason to illustrate why you need to remember graphs. If you remember graphs, doing many limit problems are very easy. Um, without recalling this graph, you know, it would be kind of hard for me to really figure out what arctangent of infinity is. So, hope these examples make a couple, a little bit of sense. Um, like I said, the, the tricky part is really going to be the integration. Sometimes showing that things are increasing or decreasing can also be tedious. But again, the basic idea, show its continuous positive and decreasing function. If it converges, so does the series. If the integral diverges, so does the series.